Good morning and welcome to the Leaders Brief by Egomonk. Today we will be looking into the future of digital advertising and what it means for businesses dependent on ad revenues, the need for modifying online retail features and facilities, and a boost to medical tracking apps caused by the COVID pandemic. Almost 600,000 jobs has been lost. Every one of them devastating for those Australians, for their families, for their communities. A very tough day. Terribly shocking, although not an unanticipated. We knew there would be hard news as the pandemic reaps its impact on Australia, as it is on countries all around the world. And so it has been the case. And in the months ahead, we can brace ourselves and must brace ourselves for further hard news for Australians to take. That was Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison briefing the media about the number of jobs being lost in Australia due to the COVID-19 pandemic in May. Since then, the numbers have spiked to 835,000 people losing work, bringing Australia's unemployment rate to 7.1%. Although 200,000 jobs were directly lost due to tourism, every other industry in the country has been as severely affected. In the US, an addition of 4.8 million jobs in June may fall short of catering to over 7 million expected job losses by the end of this year. The figures are equally grim elsewhere. A slowdown in business revenue is a direct hit to the over $500 billion global advertising market, which has, over the last decade, made digital impressions an essential part of its business model. Earlier shifts had severely impacted news media organizations, particularly print media, and the pandemic seems to have accelerated the process of their downfall. In India, the media industry expects losses over $2 billion due to a drop in advertising, with over 60% of these losses coming solely from the print media industry. In Australia, over 150 newsrooms have closed down or temporarily shut operations since January last year, including the Australian Associated Press. The Rupert Murdoch-owned Australian Community Media and News Corp Australia have also suspended printing several non-daily publications. While overall television consumption has increased, advertising has seen a steady decrease since the start of the pandemic. A major reason for this development is almost 70% of brands deciding to cut down on ad spending to balance losses stemming from the corona crisis. Globally, television advertising is expected to shrink by 17.6% according to a Group M report. The report pegs the expected total decline in advertising to be 12%, with the highest drop in out of home advertising at 25% and the smallest fall in digital advertising at 2.8%. An expected recovery with a projected growth of 8.2% according to the Group M report will be dominated by the digital space due to lower prices and broader outreach. However, media and advertising companies need to restructure their strategy to make the most of this gain. The use of automation and ad targeting are some areas where the industry is likely to focus on. Apart from this, various advertising companies have adopted teleworking software, reduced office spaces, and increased the use of digital tools for their daily functioning. Not only is COVID pushing the ad industry to rely more on digital spaces, but every other industry, including retail stores, are reworking their strategies to maximize the use of the internet. Uh, my belief is e-commerce is the future, and e-commerce is going to replace a lot of traditional way of doing business. People say in the past 20 years, with poor logistic, terrible payment, terrible connection of the internet in the world, but still e-commerce grow like this. For our platform alone in China in the past 15 years, people say, ah, no logistics, no credit system, no financing, no this and no that. Even that, last year, our sales on our platform is more than 750 billion US dollars GMV sales. It's almost ranking number 21 countries GDP. Only 20 years in Beijing, without a perfect logistic system, without a perfect payment system, without blockchain technology, it grow like this. What if the next 20 years, when all the technology is ready, when all the government and organizations and entrepreneurs are ready, they think this is a lifestyle. This is the way young people live, and it's going to be the future. Jack Ma had forecasted at the World Economic Forum in 2018. His words seem to hold true even now, and a push for digital retail is also being reflected in government policies across the world. 
India, which has recently seen escalating cross-border tensions with its neighbor China, had banned 59 Chinese mobile applications from its stores. Soon after the move, the government drafted an e-commerce policy focusing on increased transparency for consumers and competitiveness for investors. Under the new draft, the government will appoint an e-commerce regulator to ensure competitiveness in the online industry. The draft policy also mandates government access to online companies' source codes and algorithms to stop digitally induced biases by competitors. This creates room for several smaller firms to join the e-commerce chain without having to fear targeted dominance by sites such as Amazon. In Japan, companies have started addressing the lack of personalized experience in e-retail. A Nikkei Asian Review report mentioned how Jaguar Land Rover Japan offers its customers the ultimate purchase experience by allowing them to choose the model of their choice on their website and then fixing an online appointment with the salesperson to finalize the deal. Companies have also started adding online messaging apps to connect to customers and give them a more exclusive experience. The global e-commerce market, which stood at $1,808.5 billion in 2019, is expected to more than double by the beginning of 2021 as more people opt for e-retail to buy everyday products in order to avoid social contact and risk the spread of the novel coronavirus. An increase in e-commerce would mean more investments in storage. Over 22% of warehouses in India are operated by e-commerce companies with an industry value of a little over $8 billion. The compound annual growth rate of the global warehouse management system market is expected to grow at 12.3% from 2020 to 2026, according to a report published by ReportLinker. And as you may remember, our plan is to complement this human contact tracing with a contact tracing app. Like other governments around the world, we've been working hard on this, and I want to be upfront and open about the challenges that we and other countries are facing. Because of this testing, we discovered a technical barrier that every other country building their own app is also now hitting. We found that our app works well on Android devices, but Apple's software prevents iPhones being used effectively for contact tracing unless you're using Apple's own technology. After we started our work on our app, Google and Apple then started working on their own product. And as soon as they did this, we began working on both. We kept our options open in the same way that we do with other areas. And I personally feel in this fight, more than any other, that we must leave no stone unturned. UK Health Secretary Matt Hannock said on June 20th, The infectious nature of the SARS-CoV-2 has forced countries to find ways to put in detection mechanisms and technology is leading with a host of mobile tracing applications that take in travel and health data of users to locate their safety and proximity to possibly infected patients. While the development and mandatory usage of such apps in certain parts of the world is building transparency and reducing stress on medical officials, it has raised security and privacy concerns. The RUB Setu app that exists has already been cracked by hackers and that is also there in public knowledge. And if you can create that level of comfort and bring about the transparency, then you're free to run any app that you want. That was Indian Member of Parliament Rahul Gandhi criticizing the Indian government's mandation of its COVID tracking Arogya Setu app after French hacker Robert Baptiste had tweeted that the app put the privacy of 19 million Indians at stake soon after its release. However, contact tracing apps have begun to gain momentum as a market of its own globally, with countries like Singapore, Germany, Ireland and Canada investing in the development of such apps and encouraging user downloads. Thank you for listening. Tune into Egomong to stay updated on the latest happenings and their impact on global trade, technology and innovation. Egomong helps you make sense of change. We are a global intelligence platform delivering asymmetric outcomes by bringing organizations closer to the communities they want to serve and the leaders they wish to influence. Visit our website insights.egomong.com that is i-n-s-i-g-h-t-s dot e-g-o-m-o-n-k dot com to subscribe and make better and faster decisions today. If you wish to collaborate with us, then please email us at contact at the rate egomonk.com. Mm-hmm.